What's up guys, Armada here, and in today's video we are gonna watch what I consider to be the greatest comeback in all of Smash history. Of course, that is a pretty broad statement, and I don't expect everyone to agree with that, but I figured we could watch this video together, I could give a little bit of like insight, uh, I was actually there in person uh, watching this. Uh, this was at a Swedish tournament back in 2006, uh, the summer of 2006. Uh, so a lot of the European uh, Melee community was relatively new at the time. Uh, the Swedish Smash community started to get established in early 05. Certain parts of Europe had competed for quite a few more years, especially uh, the Netherlands. Uh, and this match is between, at the time, uh, the European champion Ek, uh, Swedish Marv player, and the up-and-comer Amsa. Uh, Amsa had been a top player for a while walking into this tournament, but everyone, myself included, uh, expected Ek to take this tournament. I believe he had roughly not lost a tournament, a single tournament, for a full year uh, leading up to this. And this was, you know, home field and, and everything. And personally, Ek was my favorite player to watch. Uh, it still would be the favorite player uh, for me to this day. Of course, like this is 06. So, of course, the gameplay, relatively speaking to like today and stuff, uh, wouldn't, you know, compare, right? But for its time, it was the best level you could get in Europe and very high level, uh, even if you looked at like the worldwide scale. Uh, so, yeah. Let's get started, uh, let's get started uh, and see how it all played out roughly 14 years ago. I know the quality uh, quality won't be uh, too good since it's a very old recording, but trust me, it was very, very cool watching this in person. Yeah, Ek was actually a D person that inspired me to pick up Marf myself back in the day. At this point in time, I was actually a Marf man uh, going to this tournament. I got 17th, I believe. Yeah, and yeah, Ek took first stock cleanly, almost taking no damage. Also, also one thing I gotta say here is uh, this was game seven in winners finals. Uh, this was game seven in winners finals. Uh, some people might be surprised. Oh, what do you mean best of seven? Uh, up until 2014, Europe actually played best of seven in winners final, uh, loser finals, and grand finals. Uh, so it was more like in the more modern era that Europe converted uh, to best of five. But back then, yeah, we did play. We did play uh, best of seven. So yeah, there was three three going into this match and. Uh, yeah, as we said, Ek, current European champion against the underdog at the time, Amsa. Yeah, good reaction there. Uh, there you see uh, one of the differences between uh, PAL and NTSC. So obviously, since this was so long ago, Europe was not at the time playing NTSC. Uh, Europe kind of recently swapped to NTSC, the American slash Japanese version of the game. Uh, but PAL, the European version that came out uh, quite a bit later, roughly half a year, uh, they made some changes that mainly, mainly uh, was focusing on some of the top tiers. So with Marf, his down air, like in the Japanese version, you would like just straight fall to your death here. But in PAL, it's a meteor instead of a spike. So you can, like, cancel uh, basically your fall with, you know, a jump or up B. Uh, but Amso is still too low, so Ek managed to grab the lunch in time. And when that happened, the crowd was going wild. The crowd was going wild. Like, at this point, at this point in the match, a lot of people were, uh, you know already pretty much starting with like the four stock people did feel a four stock in the air uh, but I, I i mean the crowd wasn't like commentators but maybe uh, instead of commentator curse the crowd curse the biggest one i've ever witnessed damn that's like the drefen the triple spot dodge oh, a bit too early there 
Yeah, that's... Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, people going, like, off stage was not super common around this time. It's not like today when you, like, see so many people going for, like, deep, deep edge cards. This was also like the time time period where like each year was like a massive difference from you know e each year was just like the gameplay got so much better each year. Ooh. Like it, look at this point like I told you guys this is gonna be the greatest comeback of all time. Like even now, 14 years later, I can't believe that it's actually gonna be a comeback here. I can't believe like I still basically can't. The, the thing is, the issue here now for Ek, uh is that he got way, like, he got way too, uh, way too confident and kind of like, it was more like a show almost, and then it really backfired. I think in ice hockey they say uh, the, the hardest, uh, the hardest uh, thing is like to close out when you have a Theo. I guess this would be the equivalent of that. The thing is also one thing that makes this combat crazier when you think about it is that this was in an era where people's punish game wasn't that good. So in order to make these type of comebacks, you needed so many more neutral exchange wins than you needed back then. Or, uh, uh, like, back then you needed much more neutral exchange wins. Okay, th this this combo was, for its time, really good. But even today, like, it looks pretty good. And I know some people say, oh, the DI was bad, but... Cheeks, Cheeks fair setups against Marf, even on proper DI, is really good if you know how to use it. Crouching under that fair with down tilt. And then the double fair. And he's just dead. And it's like... At this point, at this point in time, the entire crowd was like, what is going on? Like, the Swedes, they were like, just please close it out. Like, what is going on? And then you had the, the people from, like, the Netherlands. And then probably from various parts of Europe, too, since Amsa was the underdog. They were like, uh, you know, they were, they were super excited. They, like, couldn't believe their eyes either. So it was super tense, super tense going into the final stock. And you can really see that X starts getting like more and more nervous over the course of this match. And the thing is also like, as we said, like he was the champion. The champion in Europe hadn't lost a single tournament for like about a year. I think it was actually slightly over a year. Yeah, I didn't get the tipper there. Solid the eyes. That moment was so scary when it happened. Yeah. I can't believe Amza is taunting there. Like you have like the greatest comeback on the line and you're just standing there taunting. Damn. Yeah. 14 years later, as I said, I still can't believe it. The thing is this set also had like a pretty pretty crazy impact so this was game seven in winners finals right and the thing is this was this comeback was so big not only like in game but mentally the grand finals was kind of like a wash i believe it was 4-1 amsa was up like 3-0 very clean ek did manage to take one game in uh, grand finals but it was like too late it was too late so this comeback, it was not only that it won winner's final, this comeback basically won the tournament. Uh, because mentally, Ek couldn't come back from this, and Amsa was like, just way, having way too much momentum. Like, it was probably no one that could stop him in that grand finals that day. It was just like too much momentum uh, for Amsa. 
and the European Smash changed quite a lot. So as we said, Ek was the European champion going into this. Uh, I didn't know him quite well at the time, uh, but my older brother knew him better. And he, I remember him saying that even before this tournament, Ek didn't really have the same drive and motivation to actually, you know, sit down and practice a lot. Uh, when Ek played against Captain Jack, who was like one of the absolutely best players in the world, uh, quite some time before this. Actually, actually, yeah, that reminds me. That, that was probably the last tournament Ek lost leading up to this. So it's probably like eight months. But against Europeans, I don't think he had lost for over a year. Uh, but then, back then, he was like super motivated to beat Captain Jack, apparently. But going into this tournament, it was like some of his motivation had already kind of like faded. This was the case for like a lot of the old school players in the European scene. Uh, not all of them, of course, but some of them. And when this comeback happened, Ek never really came back after that. He still went to some tournaments for about a year, pretty seriously still. Uh, and he was still like one of the best players in Europe. But he never won, like, a massive tournament again. Uh, he did win a Swedish tournament, I remember, and a Norwegian tournament. A Norwegian tournament, like, maybe eight, nine months later, uh, he did win. Uh, but he was, like, the favorite going into that tournament. But he still beats, like, some of the best players in Europe. And then at uh, the year later at Ross 4, he actually got 7th, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then one or two months after that, he beat, uh, he beat me. Uh, he beat me. Uh, which I actually, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like September 07. September 07. Which I ironically think is the last time I lost to Marf in Europe. Uh, but like, he still remained a pretty strong player. And he did some appearances in like 2009 after I went to Genesis 1. And even though he never like took a set after that, he was still like a strong player. Uh, so it's like one of those cases, like a very strong player that had like a lot of talent or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but the motivation was like the biggest, the biggest issue. And for Amsa, on the other hand, uh, he remained the European champion for many years to come. Uh, so this was, oh, yeah, 06, summer of 06. And then in April 2009 is when I dethroned Amsa. Uh, which was shortly before Genesis 1. So he had like almost a three year stretch starting from this comeback. Uh, and honestly, during stretches of that time for Amsa, he legit might have been the best player in the world, but no one could say for sure. Because before Genesis 1, like uh, the European community and uh, the American community, uh, they never really faced off against each other. Uh, you had like some cases of like, you know, either like pretty good or not so good European players going to the US and then some decent players from the US, go the US going to Europe, but you never had like the best facing off against the best until Genesis 1. So it's hard to say uh, because Amsa, when he made his very first appearance in the US in 2010, uh, this was about a year after I dethroned Amsa as the European champ. Before Pound, he basically got back into shape a month before Pound 4. And he still plays top three, which was really impressive. But for a long time, from like 2008-ish, when Brawl came out, until Pound, so about that two-year gap, uh, he didn't really play that much and was like really rusty. Like some people would say that people just got better and stuff, but as someone that did play against Amsa in like both those time periods, it was very obvious that he hadn't practiced much. So when I was like overtaking him, he was like legit worse in 09 than he was in like at least 2000, like early 2008. Uh, so if anything, I'm just discrediting myself. Uh, but it's like with so few tournaments, it was like a lot of people that had a hard time to like, how do you say, maintain their uh, motivation and stuff. But yeah, Amsa, he did eventually go to the US, as I said, he got third at his first appearance. Uh, so yeah, it's one of those cases where he could have been the best in the world. He might have been, but we'll never know. But one thing that is for sure is that this set, set changed European Smash forever. And in my eyes, this remains the greatest comeback in Smash history. But please let me know in the comments below which comeback do you guys consider the greatest Smash comeback of all time, whether it's Melee, Ultimate, or any other Smash game. 
please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this content and want to support me and the channel, please make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.